Hey there, everybody. Welcome to the first uh, Twitch stream of the Doomsday Dawn playtest adventure. I'm the director of game design, Jason Bowman, and I'm going to be the GM today uh, as we run these poor, unfortunate souls through part one of Doomsday Dawn, The Lost Star. Uh, we're going to be playing today using uh, a lot of our uh, fun uh, accessories from uh, Paizo. We've got our maps, we've got our playtest books, we've got characters, we've got uh, combat pads, but we've also got a couple of great things from uh, the folks who make products compatible with us. We're using some dice trays from Campaign Coins, and uh, we're really excited to be using some sounds from Sirenscape made specifically for this playtest. Now before we get going, and I want to stress this, if you are planning on playing Part 1 of Doomsday Dawn, and you have not done so already, you might want to hold off on watching this stream. There are going to be spoilers, obviously. I mean, we're going to be playing the game. So uh, you can expect that there'll be some pretty deep spoilers uh, throughout this event. And it might ruin your experience, uh, knowing all the twists and turns that are about to come. And for us doing the playtest, it's critical that you experience the adventure as you would any other adventure, because your feedback uh, is is better, is cleaner when you experienced it for the first time yourself. So, uh, we might as well get started here, and I'm going to start by uh, doing a bit of introduction. Uh, this uh, part one of uh, this adventure uh, takes place in Magnamar. Uh, three of you have been called to the estate of Kaleri Deverin, a noblewoman who lives uh, uh, in one of the more affluent parts of town. And you all are friends of hers in one way, shape, or form or another. Uh, I believe uh, Eveli Evelyrin, mm -hmm. uh, the tiefling, and Luca. Each one of you received a private summons asking you to come to her estate post-haste. She had a very important uh, uh, quest for you to undertake. And you being the adventuring sort, uh, she knew she could count on you. The journey there was paid for in a carriage, a nice coach. You were picked up at your tavern or place of residence and brought directly to her estate. Upon arriving, you were ushered inside by one of her servants to a sitting room where a quite surprising sight greeted you. Kaleri was there, seated in one of her nice plush uh, armchairs, but standing next to her are a pair of goblins, both looking rather bedraggled, covered in uh, muck and sewer grime. Um, she, Kaleri, looks perfectly at ease with them being in the room. These aren't threats. These look like allies or acquaintances. She looks at uh, the three of you as you are ushered inside and says, Welcome, my friends. I'm so glad that you could join me. I'm sure you have a lot of questions, but please be seated. Refreshments will be served. I want to introduce you to Talga, and her associate, uh, Fen. Uh, the two of them uh, were uh, discovered this morning uh, down in my vault, and uh, it is clear to me uh, that uh, they are in dire need of aid. I shall explain more, but first, uh, feel free to introduce yourselves. All right, so at this moment, uh, everybody can feel free to introduce themselves to the uh, assembled stream. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself, what you do here at Paizo, and uh, then introduce your character, maybe tell uh, a few sentences about it. And we'll start with you, Katina. Okay. Uh, my character's name is Evelyrin Halidjian. Uh, she is a half-elf half monk, um, and she's hoping to get into the Pathfinder Society. Both her parents met in the Pathfinder Society, and... Unfortunately, they disappeared, so she would like to join the adventure and hopefully maybe find them or find news of what happened to them. Um, as for me, my name's Katina Davis. I forgot that part. Yeah, no worries. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I work in customer service and dabble in freelancing. <laughs> awesome. I'm Eric Keith. I'm the software QA, and I'm playing a goblin paladin named Fen. Uh, Fen really, really likes Shellen and really, really likes pretty things and wants to do the best that she can to protect them. So, uh, yeah, that might include coming and working with these long shanks to make things uh, a little bit better around here. All right, I'm uh, Ron Lundin. I'm a uh, developer here primarily on the adventure paths for Pathfinder. Um, my character is uh, Melek the Tiefling. 
Um, born in Osirion to some loving parents, uh, after an unfortunate accident, they were he was shipped off uh, alone to some family friends in Cheliax who let him know there was some diabolical or demonic uh, heritage that he had. Proceeded to treat him quite poorly, I referred to him not by his name, but only as the Tiefling, and it sort of stuck, particularly when his uh, demonic powers began to surface. Uh, he's a sorcerer, a human sorcerer, but everybody calls him the Tiefling. Um, despite his uh, heritage, despite his treatment, he's out of Cheliax and wants to make a positive name for himself. Hi, my name is uh, Chris Sims, and I'm a developer on Starfinder, and my character is Luca Meadowpeak. He is a halfling druid who thought he was going to spend most of his life blessing crops and guarding his community, but he had some strange dreams and visions relatively recently, and uh, that kind of drove him out of his home. All right. Well, now that the cast is set, Kaliri uh, looks at all of you, and after you're all seated, and she makes sure that the beverages are served, and they come around, and they serve uh, you and Tolga uh, equally, along with everyone else. Uh, uh, she uh, says, well, where to begin? Where to begin? Ah, I suppose at the beginning. This morning, I went down to my vault. Uh, I, in, in, in seven days' time, I'm set to travel to the small town of Sandpoint. You've probably never heard of it. Uh, but I'm making my way up there for a festival. There, there's an annual festival uh, called the Swallowtail Festival. And I'm, I'm due to be there in seven days. Um, as uh, a devotee of, of Desna, I have an old family heirloom that I hoped to bring with me to the festival. Um, it is a star. It's called the Lost Star of Desna. It's a, a diamond-encrusted brooch uh, that uh, is, is in Desna's symbol. And I keep it in my vault. It's an old thing. I don't wear it very often, but it did seem apt that I should bring it with me to the Swallowtail Festival and have it consecrated there with their new temple uh, to Desna. It, it only seemed fitting. I went down to my vault this morning only to find it plundered. The hole, there's a hole in the center of my vault, a large gaping uh, chasm that leads down into the sewers beneath magma, Magnamar. Many of my precious belongings are gone, including the star. I was beside myself with rage. I, I threw myself against the shelves, crying out in, in panic that that heirloom has been in my family for generations. And that is when I heard Talga. Talga here. And Talga goes, Yes, yes, Mistress heard me. Mistress, mi Mistress found me. Kaleri goes, Yes, she was uh, poor, poor thing. She was balled up in the corner, crying, weeping, tears. Talga, Talga, tell, tell them, tell them. You, your, your story is, is yours to tell. And uh, Kaleri kind of cedes the floor to Talga, who takes a few kind of precious steps forward. Uh, Talga is uh, a, a, a goblin woman. She looks... Um, middle age for a goblin. You haven't known very many goblins to kind of get a good sense of their age, but uh, uh, the, the signs of, of age and wear are, are upon her. And uh, she has uh, her clothes are kind of a, a ragged mess of tunic and scrap. Uh, looks like it's salvaged from the sewer. And she uh, looks like she has some sort of poor cap that she's like uh, worrying into a wrinkled mess in her hands. And she looks at all of you with a kind of a, a desperate uh, glare and says, My people, they're, they're, we, we, we stole the star. And Kaleri kind of sadly confirms. But but we didn't mean to. We were forced to. We, we, we were made to do it by our by new big boss. New big boss. New big boss. He made us do it. He made us take them. But I no want to listen to him. He is he is he is mean. He is cruel. He is he is vicious and he is he is he is maybe a vampire. Vampire, he drinks the blood of goblins I cannot, I cannot serve him any longer, I says, and me and Fran, and she points to him. We, we decide to break free with some others and, and, and use the, the robbery as a chance to escape. And, and, and not all of us made it. And at this, you can see tears welling up in her eyes, and she looks uh, truly heartbroken for the loss of some of her fellow goblins. He killed them in a rage. I hid friend help me he he guarded my fr friend help me he guarded my way out 
He he protected me. Dracus, the taker. He took my clan. He he took us. He he killed old chief. He killed him. He drank his blood. He's a vampire. Vampire. Very, very scary vampire. I can I can I can do nothing. But and and at that she looks up at Cleary and Cleary goes, Yes, yes. As you can see it is it's quite a dire tale. It appears that her and her tribe have been cajoled into robbing vaults all throughout the city. I myself have heard numerous friends whose vaults have been taken or plundered and their their goods uh, gone missing in the past weeks. It seems that this mud chewer tribe and they should talk and nods. Uh, are the ones b responsible, but only at the behest of this Dracus. She looks to the the now assembled four, th three of you and, and Fen. She says, and this is where you come in. The Lost Star is a priceless family heirloom, and I desperately wish to see it returned to me. Friends, I know that you are more capable in arms than, than I. I and I would greatly appreciate it if you would travel with Fen here, back to the home of his people, deal with this Dracus, and retrieve the Lost Star. Would you do this for me? Yes. Probably. Is this Dracus a person vampire or a goblin vampire? Talga goes, he is, he is not goblin. Well, he is goblin, but he is big goblin. He is, he is, he is a goblin vampire. But definitely vampire drinks blood. I have seen it. Well, I have seen bloodless goblins. He's a vampire. You haven't seen him drink the blood. I have seen blood running down his mouth. Okay. As he throws the body of those who have displeased him. Just like really <laughs> worrying that hat into kind of a twisted mess right now. <laughs> well, I think I think we intend to displease him as well. Yeah. Yes, we will displease him. Calary <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> kind of looks at that <laughs> turn of phrase and is like, well, as long as I retrieve the lost star, d displease him all you want. Uh, uh, do you have any questions for Tolga? I can take you down to the basement. I, I leave in seven days, so you do have some time, but I'm worried that he may sell it or or uh, use it to some foul end before it can be retrieved. Uh, commit uh, more robberies. Uh, yeah, indeed, more yes. Uh, so time is of the essence, but uh, I don't want you to rush in full hearty, uh, headstrong. Uh, do you have any questions for Talga? And Talga's there, kind of freaking around. How do we get into the place where he is? Do you know where he is? Talga nods. She goes, yes, he is, he is probably back in our home with the rest of what is left of the tribe. He... He is probably back in the Ashen Ossuary. That is our home. It is a place filled with burned bones. It's where we live. It's where he took us after after he killed last chief. We live there now. He is probably back there. I can... Fen, Fen can take you there. He, is, <laughs> he has been there. I cannot go back. Drink us. He is, he is a vampire. I cannot face him. He will kill me. Does he have anybody protecting him or any defenses we should know about? Other other members of Mudchores, my kin, they are under his sway, his control. He has used vampire powers and and funguses to control them. He has he has used these on them and they they are they are his thralls. Funguses? Yes, he makes them eat it. It is mushroom, it is taste bad. Tastes like rotten sewer rat, so I mean not too bad, but not great either. <laughs> like <laughs> especially especially, especially bad there. rotten sewer rat. <laughs> <laughs> Even, for Even for goblins, very bad rotten sewer rat. Like rotten sewer rat that is laid in puddle for too long and is now too mushy to eat and not quite mush enough to make into stew. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> They're great for throwing at people, but really not good for eating. Have you eaten this? Uh, we haven't passed, but but I stopped eating mine days ago, and 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 then Dracus's power over me waned, so I am better now. Fen and I, we both stopped eating. We we took ours, and then when he was not looking, we spit it out. That's smart. Smart. Yeah. 
We know things. <laughs> and then to hide it, we made other goblins eat double portions, and they are now very under Dendricus's control. <laughs> Super so, thrall. Yeah, oh. they, they, they seem to like taste of mostly Wait. mushy, rotten sewer rat. Wait, you, you did what? That was no. Well, I had to hide it. <laughs> I, I threw mine in a whale. Oh, that would have been smarter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. In a whale? A whale. Okay. Do you get a sense that this uh, new vampire boss, whose name I can't... Dracus. 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 The is, he, is he looking for something? Is that why you're doing all these robberies? He does not say. He just says that he has big boss he must please, and, and he has to steal from, from, from rich people to, to, to take. That He is taker. That is his job. He is taker. With vampire. So he's a he's vampire. taker slash vampire. Right? That's right. He <laughs> is vampire. Blood. Yes. He drinks blood. He and his thralls. Yes. And sleeps in an ossuary. Yes, full of bones. So va- vampire. That's clearly. Fashion <laughs> ossuary. All goblins know this. We it share wisdom known. with you. It is known. Yes. Hmm. Alrighty. So, goblins... Anything else that we should be aware of that is dangerous in your lair? Well, lair is in sewer. Sewer is dangerous. <laughs> um, sewer is filled with bugs and monsters of all kinds. Goblins live with those all the time. Do you not have those in surface? Yes. We have we do. Like spiders the size of small dogs, you know, uh, half crocodile, half like snake things, you know. Sewer monsters, though. Yeah. You surely have these up here. Uh, Spider sure. size of dogs. Something <laughs> like that, maybe. Kaleri <laughs> is mortified. And she says, Yes, and as soon as you return with the star, I shall be paving up my basement. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. Yeah, there's something terrible like right underneath there. I do not need to know that. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Kaleri yeah. says, Well, uh, 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 I have prepared some, some... I've had one of my manservants prepare a, a, a bit of rations for each of you so that you might have food on your journey. Uh, but uh, uh, Fen here tells me that it is not far away, perhaps only 10, 15 minutes. Uh, unfortunately, that is 10 to 15 minutes through the sewers. Um, so is there I'll a put way a rug g- down. Is there a way to <laughs> get there without going through the sewer? Uh, Tall Gug goes, No! Lair is in sewer. (laughs) (laughs) Must go through sewer to get to lair. Great. I don't think we want to bring any food into the sewer. It's only 10 or 15 minutes away and we get real hungry. We'll just come back. That's... Kaleri goes, I shall put down two rugs. (laughs) (laughs) I have a question. Can we have a boot allowance? Uh, yes, we can. We can ensure that your boots are replaced. It is yeah, the least I, I can do. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Thank you. around in the sewer. <laughs> that's that's more than more than fair. I mean, I I'm asking for my face? friends. I'm going to be yes, yes, I, I will even <laughs> find you. And she looks at your abnormally well, large goblin feet <laughs> and, <laughs> and is like, sewers. "Yes, I, I will find a pair of boots for you somewhere. Perhaps dwarven boots will work." Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, uh, right this way, and she she gets you up and leads you down uh, stairs to her vault. Inside, you can see the the damage and the chaos that was caused. The place looks like it's been plundered, and the source of it is obvious. There's a giant hole in the center of the floor, uh, and even from here, you can smell the stink of the Magnamar sewer. Her entire vault reeks. And uh, Talga goes, "Mm." (laughs) Mmm! And uh, she points at the... uh, She points at the... uh, At the... uh, the the hole and uh, says, uh, uh, "Well, um, you best uh, get going. I'll be waiting for you here when you return. And uh, good luck." Thank you. I'll show you the way. It's it's not that bad. We have to walk way through mockup that's about up to my waist. So probably just get all of your boots. It'll be fine. I don't wear boots. Oh, neither do I. Well, that's really <laughs> unfortunate, because t- two minutes into your journey, you really wish you were wearing boots. Um, the ho- the sewer tunnel beneath Kaleri's estate is about two foot deep sewage. And it is as gross and horrible as you might think. For you, this comes up fully to, like, mid-chest. Yeah, don't worry, um, don't worry. This stuff's fresh. It's when it's deeper, <laughs> then it gets worse. Yeah. 
And he's not wrong. Um, as you get deeper and deeper into the dungeon, or into the sewers, um, the smell grows only more rancid. Um, and this after about ten minutes, uh, Fen directs you to take a, a side branch. And uh, that leads uh, up a uh, incline that fortunately leads you out of the worst of the sewers and into a small chamber where I believe you guys have set up your miniatures right there. I immediately use prestidigitation on myself to cleanse myself. <laughs> can you do that again? Uh, and again. And, and again. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, you're, you. you're using prestidigitation and you have suddenly learned a new limitation of your magic. Perhaps it is the new version of the game, but oh, no. the smell doesn't seem to fully come clean. Or maybe it's the fact that you're still just in the sewer. It's just, yeah, no. All right. Smells to digitation. You're lucky there's not, there hasn't been any festivals in the past week. The sewers get real rank after that no, happens. No, yeah, no. The damp sewer passages have led to a slimy cistern that stinks of decay. On the northern edge of this circular chamber lies a pile of burnt bones in front of a scorched tunnel. Uh, you have placed yourselves uh, on the map now, uh, just outside of that, so. Uh, on the far side there is the this kind of scorched tunnel. It looks like at some point in time in the not-too-distant past, um, there was some horrific fire in there because the entire area is burned and the area above the doorway is, is filled with, uh, is covered in soot and flame, uh, scorch marks uh, all upon the, the sewer. Uh, this room itself looks like it used to be some old cistern, but the grate in the center looks too clogged for it to hold anything, and it looks like this stopped being used. Um, so the entire chamber just kind of stinks of rot and decay. Um, and that's what you see. What do you do? I'll take point. I'll, I'll keep leading them forward. All right, so you're leading everyone forward. Um, you know that you are approaching the lair of you and your people. Uh, do you want to have your weapons out? Do you want to do anything? Or you just kind of want to march bravely forward? Uh, I'm going to be a little bit wary just because I know that some of the people are kind of mind thralls. So I'll have my shield out and I'll have a weapon out as well and just slowly progress forward. All right. I'd like to keep my crossbow. Let me ask you, I don't want to stereotype goblins as a love of fire, but was this all burnt before you guys got here or is this uh, recent? Uh, so this actually, there was some adventurers that were coming through here. You know, like they found out there was goblins and, you know, they heard us. So one of them tried pulling out a torch and lighting and boom! And it was oh just, it was, it, it smelled amazing. I mean, I didn't partake, but the other goblins just went crazy. Yeah, there was swamp gas everywhere. It was. Alrighty. Yeah. When he strides forward, I'm going to go to the left there okay. and, and sneak along the wall. All right. So you're kind of trying to keep a low profile. Mm -hmm. uh, Eva Leary, what are you doing? Um, I'd like to kind of look around and make sure there aren't any sort of traps or. Okay. Just, so just kind of keeping an eye out. Yeah. All right. All right. So Evelyn's keeping an eye out. For Fen, you've got your shield and uh, sword out or flail. Flail. Ooh. Okay. Uh, Tiefling, you've got out your crossbow and loaded it. Yeah, crossbow loaded it and keeping an eye out. A little well. concerned. All right. And lastly, Luca, you're kind of moving off to the side and and keeping an eye on things with my sling staff um, in hand. Fen, you want to adjust the minis just a bit to reflect that? So I'll move five feet. Yeah. You're going this direction. Mm -hmm. All right. You are. My weapons right We're here. coming forward just a little bit, but keep an eye right, So everybody All right. move up here. So as you kind of move into the chamber, uh, there is a put. There's these large puddles of water, and w the one water. It's not well. Water. <laughs> yeah. Water. Let's yeah. Let's put some big quote marks around <laughs> that. Um, and uh, as you draw into the chamber, uh, the puddle on the far side of the room suddenly starts undulating. Um, in a way that isn't just like a drip hit it, but it starts moving and writhing, and quite suddenly it just kind of bursts, and it's almost as if the puddle itself has come alive. It's this like pile of sewer slime and goo that is now s kind of pulled itself together from the puddle and is coming up out of the puddle, and the moment it does so, these like ropey, gross pseudopods start flailing all about. So if you could go ahead and put that miniature uh, on the map there, that's perfect. 
And uh, at this point in time, I think I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative. So uh, for most of you, this is going to be a perception check. Uh, but for uh, Luca, if you'd like, you can make a stealth check instead, since you said you were kind of stealthing off to the side and trying to keep yourself hidden. And just hold on to the number, and I'll grab it from you in just half a second. Am I allowed to make a perception check instead? Of a stealth you can. Okay. Yeah, you can choose to make a perception check instead. Nice. Okay. Alrighty. Put him right there. Uh, Evelyn, in. What do you have? Eight. Eight. Very good. Fen, what do you have? Thirteen. Thirteen. Excellent. Tiefling. A seventeen. A seventeen. Very good. Luca. I'm thirteen also. I'm okay with Fen going first. All right. All right, so I have everyone in initiative order now. Tiefling, you managed to uh, uh, spot this thing before it manages to move too far. So uh, why don't you uh, go ahead and take your turn? You get three actions. Um, for those of you who maybe are watching us play the new version of Pathfinder for the first time, in combat now, instead of move and standard and all that sort of stuff, uh, you now get three actions to kind of do whatever you want. Uh, Fen, you're up. Tiefling. Oh, sorry, yeah. Tiefling. Yeah, all right. Uh, well, Messed I it up my, already. <laughs> my my uh, heavy crossbow is out and loaded. I might as well fire and see whether or not an arrow does anything to... All right. Slime. Um, ten. Uh, armor ten. class ten. Armor class ten. So, slimes, as it turns out, have particularly terrible armor classes, so that is going to hit. Um, your crossbow bolt slams into the ooze and punctures its membrane and like <laughs> gross sewer gas and water and like an old fish skeleton goes shooting out. Um, can because uh, there's always an old f there's like an entire <laughs> intact for some reason fish skeleton in sewers. I don't understand why. And they have uh, yeah, of course they use. I'm free. Um, yeah. Unfor so, so unfortunately, it's only one point of damage. It is one mighty of piercing damage. One mighty point of damage. Don't sell yourself short. That's a that's amazing. You have <laughs> one fish skeleton. Yeah. Yeah. worth of damage. All right, yeah, you have done one fish skeleton <laughs> worth of damage. All right, uh, but that did appear to hurt it normally. It didn't appear to have any sort of particular resistance or immunity. The, 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 the bolt hit it, and it squirted out a bunch of sewer ooze, and uh, that was your first Crossbow. action because your crossbow was out and loaded. What would you like to do with your second action? Uh, second and third actions are going to be to use Ray of Frost. All right, so, so. Um, you release the grip on your crossbow, right? right. And use your, your free hand to uh, do the somatic, do components the somatic component. That. Uh, that's one of the actions. Then the other action, I believe, is a verbal component. So you speak the magic words and unleash a ray of frost. Ray of frost, a bolt of cold. All right, now this is your second attack, so it will be at the minus, minus five, five penalty. Yeah. All righty. All righty. <laughs> but if it's easy to hit, even at minus five, that's going to be, yeah, maybe not this is Nine? A nine is going to hit still, yeah. Wow. No, right. it, I am an I am an ooze. So uh, three points of cold. Three damage. points of cold damage. All right. So a bunch of the gross sewer bits, including like an old apple core, freeze, uh, and uh, the ooze looks like it is wounded by that. But it still looks quite alive. I mean, Party. according to the the technical definition of alive. Um, okay. So, uh, that was all three of your actions, mm -hmm. so your turn is over. Although, remember, in the new version of Pathfinder, if you have the ability to take reactions, you do get one reaction between the start of your turn and the start of your next turn. So, I'm going to wager that maybe only one or two of you have a reaction, if any of you, actually. You know what? I didn't take too close a look. I think some of you do, especially with a shield. All right, so, uh, you may not have a reaction to take, but if you do, uh, keep note. All right. So, um... The sewer ooze goes. So, let's see. Everyone is... All right. It moves forward uh, 10 feet up toward you, Fen. Mm -hmm. And upon getting there, it convulses. It just kind of blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it just, like, explodes out in a wave of filth and slime is the polite way of putting it. Um, and you are just, all of you are just splashed in this. And like some of you had your mouth open and were like, ah, blah. Um, 
So, uh... This, this is why I have the shield out, actually. It's not for defense. It's to block this. It, it does still get me on the side. What was that? It does still get me when yeah, I'm it's a, it's within 20 feet. Ooh. Oh, so, oh uh, the entire room gets, like, it's as if somebody set off a paint bomb in the room. It's just like, pfft, it hits everything. Except it's um, not paint. It if only it was No, paint. it is not. It is not paint. In the right. TV show, it's just a montage of splatters. <laughs> Yeah, the, the, like this would be the point where the camera goes black because it's covered in goo and then it slowly slides you just off. Hear the, screaming yeah. off in the distance. Yeah, <laughs> no. Um, so here's the here's the deal. Uh, everyone needs to make me a reflex saving throw as the uh, as the ooze washes over you. Oh, mm. let the ooze wash over you. No. What do you got? I got eighteen. 18 is going to make. <laughs> 10. 10 is going to fail. Oh. Uh, then 7 will certainly fail. 7 is it going to fail by fails. too much. No, it does okay. not. 16. 16 is going to make. So those of you who make, um, <laughs> uh, avoid uh, any sort of negative penalty. You don't take any damage, and you don't take any bad effects. You kind of hide behind somebody else, <laughs> or or duck out of the way, or just kind of the the main burst of <laughs> sewer grossness kind the of discharge. misses you. Um, the those of you who failed, uh, you're going to take four points of damage, mm. and you are hampered ten. Ew. Now hampered ten. Uh, for those of you not familiar, is one of the new conditions in the game. And hampered... Oh, that's right, we put those in the combat chapter. Right. Mental note, put these in the back of the book for the final version. Mm -hmm. um, hampered is going to reduce your speed by 10 feet. For how long? Uh, well... Until you until, until, you, until you get the muck off of you. Ugh. Now, uh, it, it's it's only going to last a minute, uh, but that's probably going to be the majority that's of, of uh, that's a long minute. Um, you can spend an action to clean some of the muck off of you, reducing the uh, hampered condition by five feet for each action you spend. So uh, until then, your speed is dropped by ten feet, um, and that was its second action. It still has a third action, so Fen, it's going to try and hit you with a pseudopod. I mean, that seems reasonable. Yeah, I mean, why wouldn't it, mm -hmm. right? Oh, but a two is oh. definitely not going to hit, uh, even with my bonus. Um, so uh, the pseudopod comes uh, flailing out at you, but you easily bat it aside with your shield. Mm -hmm. uh, all right, that was the monster. Fen, you are up. It's right in front of you. Well, I'm going to go ahead and raise my shield because I really don't want that to happen again. Some of that got in my mouth, and yeah. I can definitely taste that it was Taco Tuesday when this yeah, thing was Yeah, well, that, spawned, is, so, that uh, is fair. Yeah, no, it was, yeah. This so is this adventure is occurring on a Wednesday, which is really unfortunate. It's <laughs> really unfortunate. This would have gone down so different. So that's my first action. Second action is to hit it with my flail. I know it's <laughs> sure. kind of uh, like it's hitting a giant balloon, but maybe if I hit it hard enough. That, that... Uh, that's going to be a 14. Uh, 14. A 14 is going to hit. Okay. Uh, cleanly and clearly. Go ahead and then deal damage. It will take uh, six points of bludgeoning damage. All right. So uh, that that hits it and more gross sewer gas and slime escapes, but it's still uh, fighting strong. It doesn't even look that hurt yet. Well, then I'm going to go ahead and uh, just go ahead and keep that up because uh, it saved me the need to move up to it. So second action is going to be a 24 to hit it. Is that with the penalty for it being no, your second attack? No, that's a 19. Attack? All right. So a 19. A 19 not only hits, it's a critical hit. Yes. However, I am a news and one of the few creatures that is still immune to critical oh, hits. No. So go ahead and roll damage as normal. Right. Well, then uh, that's going to be eight points of bludgeoning damage this time as wow. I just start ripping and tearing into this. All right, yeah, you're just slamming your, your uh, was it a flail? This guy. It's a flail? <laughs> yep, yeah, it's a flail. into it, and it is just, like, he is getting more and more spattered with <laughs> ooze gore. <laughs> We'll call it that. You, you um, hear, actually, even though he's a goblin, there's soft crying. It's like, oh, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> I do this because I love all of you. <laughs> it's like dripping off of his nose and ears now. It's oh. really gross. Luca. I'm going to move to here. Okay. Then I'm going to load, uh, which is a reload one, so that takes one action to load, right? All right, yeah. 
uh, my staff, and then I'm going to sling. All right. At the ooze. So you've moved, loaded, and fired. Oh no. That's only a seven, actually. A seven still hits. I am Whoa! an ooze, and I don't dodge anything. It's like trying to hit <laughs> an immobile object almost. Uh, then it can have nine bludgeoning Nine damage. points of damage. <laughs> now, you are far enough away that you don't get hit with any of the splash. That's right. Fen, you are not far <laughs> enough away. I have my shield racer. <laughs> all right, I'll reduce the amount of ooze that went into an orifice by 20%. All right. All yeah, right. The streaming is still the same, though. That, I that is you. fair. <laughs> all right. Uh, so, Luca, that was all three of your actions? Yes. Evaliran, it is your turn. Oh, let's see. I think I'm going to get into my tiger stance. You're going to punch it. I, I'm going to claw it. With, with your hands. Weapon uh, I've got. Okay. So oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we all make mistakes. I'm going to. <laughs> so I'm going to step up here. Just all right. Because I would totally love to be right next to it. And I'm going to kind of do a quick meditation to prepare myself for how <laughs> gross this is going to be. Um, and all right. then I'm going to use Tiger Claw on it. All right. So ah. you shift into Tiger Stance, you take a step forward, and. and and rawr. Rawr, take rawr. that. <laughs> rawr. Super <sludge>. Take that. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> and, oh, that is a 10. So that's. A 10 hits, certainly right? hits. Uh, yeah, no, your your claw grabs hold of part of an old sofa that's embedded in it and rips <laughs> it out. Okay. Take that. Free couch. That's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> we can use mm, that later, I'm sure. Sewer couch. Right there. <laughs> Put it up on Galarian list. Well, you've gotten some <laughs> treasure now, so time to retire. Uh, six damage. Six more points of damage. This ooze now clearly is showing signs of severe damage. It, it looks like it's smaller than half the size it was when you first started fighting, um, and it's like leaking viscous... Oh, I'm going to stop uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... Oh, <laughs> yeah. We all have vivid imaginations. Every time we hit it, does it make like a comical like? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it does. Yeah, okay. it's a, it's like when you're when you're when you step on wet carpet. That kind of <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a bowl um, full of pudding. Yeah, no, that's fine. As if <laughs> as if you were punching a bowl of pudding. Yeah, just I like do that. That sometimes, that, so. that is a thing we do here. Yeah. That's 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 every Thursday. That's, at that's how we get the sound effects for sirens. That's yeah. right. Yeah, no, that's fair. All right, the tiefling. Alrighty. Well, the uh, ray of frost seemed to work well enough last time. I'm going to open with that. All right. It's f first, my first two actions. Uh, twelve to hit. Yeah. Twelve is going to hit. Yeah, the five, ray of frost slams damage. right into it. All right, five points of damage. All right, it is still animate swinging. Uh, animate. Then, I, then I'm going to move kind of a big yeah. sort of circle around it. I want to get yeah. out of there. That's. Smart. <laughs> stay, stay safely uh, away were, over. Were here. you also covered in gross? Uh, I don't was, forget so that you're. That's five, ten. Oh, only fifteen. Mm. All right, it managed to survive to another turn. Great. All right, so it goes, uh -oh. and uh, being uh, being a kind of unintelligent uh, pile of gross, um, it doesn't really have much in the way of tactical thought and continues to attack whatever is nearest. However. That has now become a two-choice uh, 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 question, so I'm going to roll and see which one of you it comes after. All right, uh, Evaluarin, it's going to swing oh, at you good. first. Um, so uh, it lashes out with a pseudopod, okay. um, and ooh, is a 23 going to hit? Yeah. Ooh, oh, the pseudopod. Hold up, hold up. Uh, it's dropping its guard against me then, and it's trying to hit one of my friends. Oh, I'm going to fact, do it my did attack just hit one of your, so. your friends. So you're taking a retributive strike. Correct. So right. it's at a minus mm. two, so, um, and that is correct. my yeah. attack goes off before its attack because it's lowering its guard. So that nice hole where the sofa used to be, I'm just going to slam my flail <laughs> in there as hard as I can. <laughs> I know, it's like, <laughs> bad touch. Uh, that's, um, a, that's a 15. A 15 is going, to, well, it would be a crit if I could be critted, but it's going to hit. Oh. All right, then it's going to take uh, another six points of damage, uh, and it is enfeebled one, as right. my mace kind of just blocks so a bit. So, no, basically what happens is the ooze is like 
rising up to slam into you. <laughs> like it's oh. it's like turning into this giant wave of just like garbage and filth, and yeah. you can see like old like r- like rusty uh, rusty mug in there and bits of garbage and an old oh. banana peel Flowers and a turkey carcass <laughs> and it's about to slam into you and just as it's about to happen this flail just slams right through it and it just pops like a balloon oh. it just it just it just comes undone and you're still hit but instead of being hit by a pseudopod it's just a wave of filth and garbage that slams into both you and Fen. The two of you just get coated in filth and disgusting ooze. And with that, it just kind of falls to the ground in a splash. And as you're all standing there and the room suddenly grows desperately quiet, a fish skeleton just falls from the (laughs) ceiling covered in slime. And you have defeated the sewer ooze. Huzzah! You I, all right. I take a moment to cleanse my friends with prestidigitation. Yeah, kindly. you know, it seems to be even less effective than last time. Like, yeah, but they look fine. Yeah, no, they <laughs> look fine. But man, does everything smell in here? So, um, it's in my nose. I'll just, I'll just pound my belt pouch really quickly, and we'll just spray a bunch of this stuff back at me. <laughs> oh, yep, yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like clearly in the belt pouch filled with your food, and like, and like, you like catch a like half-eaten roll that's covered in mold anyway. What do you do with that, dude? I mean, it's covered in sewer slime now. Anybody hungry? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't think so. Yeah, all right. I was. Oh, my, my sweet <laughs> had a, roll. I had a big breakfast. I, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so um, we're going to continue with with the adventure, but I do want to take a small pause here and stop out because normally what we would ask people to do is after they play this adventure, we would ask you to go to Mm paizo.com. There are links to surveys in there, and those surveys take you to SurveyMonkey where we have set up kind of these in-depth surveys where we ask you about your character and what you played and how the adventure went for you. Because we're doing this on a live Twitch stream, I think what I'm going to do instead is just kind of pause the adventure now and again and ask you some of the questions that occur in that survey. Now, a lot of them are things like, how long did it take for you to build your character and stuff? I'm not going to ask you that here. Um, Although, tune back in tomorrow. We are going to be going through a lot of our survey responses from these first early surveys in uh, the first of what we're calling Doomsday Dawn Deconstructed. Uh, So tune in tomorrow for some more of that. But I will skip to the question that specifically relates to this encounter, which was, how effective do you feel your character was during this encounter? So it's against a sewer ooze. It's a thing with very low AC and awful lot of hit points and immunity to, like, critical hits and stuff. So you can hit it real easily, but you can't do a ton of damage to it. You just got to kind of whittle it away. Now, for some characters, that's really frustrating. For other characters, that's really effective. I think you guys were mostly effective, but I'll let you guys answer that question. How effective do you feel your character was during that encounter? Uh, I only took one turn. I feel like that is a reason- reasonable yeah. combat. I mean, uh, and I did a lot of damage because I am using a cool halfling weapon. That weapon is pretty great. Yeah. The, the the staff sling is, is pretty good now. The mm-hmm. D10 damage on Rick yeah, yeah. is not bad. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah, so that's interesting. I, I, f- I felt okay about that. Yeah. I would say surprisingly effective in that very first fight, the very first character, I'm using a weapon and casting a spell on the same turn. Yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, that, uh, we, we found that uh, whenever we're running playtests for people, especially if they're playing a spellcaster and they end up in a, in a situation where they fire their ranged weapon and are able to cast a spell in one round, they just kind of go, I feel way more useful than I was before <laughs> when I would just kind of stand there, maybe cast a spell and do I that absolutely thing. feel yeah. that way here. Yeah, awesome. Uh, I felt far more effective than I was expecting using a bludgeoning weapon against a giant uh, blob. I was expecting to flail uselessly against it. Ha! I'm not sorry. Eric, I'm not I, know, sorry. Yeah, no, I know you're not sorry, and that's part of the problem. <laughs> All right, uh, Katina. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel kind of the same. I mean, I only had one turn, and I feel like I did a decent amount of damage. I wasn't really sure which the best kind was, but... Sure. The Flashing seemed to do pretty well, despite the Uh grossness. (laughs) So there's something interesting here, and it's probably not readily apparent to most people who play this. And and some of it is that the way that we're asking these questions, and the fact that that question is attached to what type of character you are playing, is it gives us a sense of how each class is performing against certain encounters. So some of these are kind of in-depth in that we're able to analyze how the adventure actually functions and how the players are actually interacting with the rules content. 
This one in particular has an interesting bit of design tech in it because it's against a monster that traditionally used to have a whole bunch of resistances and like, oh, bludgeoning weapons don't work and slashing weapons cause it to split in half. For the new game, we kind of took a new approach to some of those monsters and said, is there a better way for us to emulate its resiliency while still making the encounter fun? Because saying, you hit it with, and you were using the wrong weapon type, so I guess you don't do any damage. Our new flexible monster rules allow us instead to say, this is a level one monster, which is not a hard monster, but it has a ridiculous amount of hit points. That's where its thing is. So instead of giving it a bunch of resistances, we gave it a bunch of hit points instead. I noticed that it had a lot of hit points. Like it felt like we did a lot <coughs> of damage to it. Yeah. I was like, it's still up, but yeah. it, was all, it was still only a two round fight. I mean, yeah. yeah okay. And the point, the, the the point there is that it's designed to be able to be really easily hit, and you can deal a lot of damage to it. So everybody feels like they're involved, even if maybe they don't have the perfect tool for the job. Anyway, mm -hmm. good feedback. Thank you. We'll move on. Um, so. Uh, you guys have defeated the Sewer Ooze. The uh, doorway to the Ashen Ossuary uh, <laughs> stands before you. I'll take that mini back. Thank you. It was one of the hampered people. I want to make sure I brush myself off pretty good. No, uh, it's, it's in there to stay. Apparently, it's the smell that is the worst part. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. fair. That that filth ain't coming out anytime soon. It's All right. Mentally, either. So, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Good luck sleeping tonight. Yeah. All right. <laughs> okay. So, uh, what do you do? You have a uh, darkened, scorched passageway before you. Fen has indicated that this is the entrance to the lair. <laughs> Well, I'm going <coughs> to reload my heavy crossbow, look towards the entrance, and wait patiently for the paladin to go first. I can do that. Oh. Yep. <laughs> All right. Let me do one. Just. I'll spend a minute because my movement uh, hamper ten right now is literally five feet. So I'm just going to brush myself off. Okay. Uh, you know, hit a couple other spots where something might have pocketed. You know, like. Yeah, like one of those dead sewer rats falls out of like one of the armor joints. I have a question no, though. Skeleton. That's tempting, actually. Mm, no, <laughs> I'm not going to eat that. I have a question though. So yeah. with hampered. Could I use Prestidigitation since Prestidigitation can clean to substitute my actions for theirs? I think that is a pretty reasonable interpretation of what that spell could do. I think this is one of those places where the rules don't specifically say, yes, you can do that, but it does make perfect sense to say, yeah, Presto, yeah. Prestidigitation causes the slime to fall off of him and the hampered condition goes away. I don't have a problem with that. So I, I'm, I'm helping. Cool. You'll just reach without, over and without touching. Without touching. Yeah. yeah. I'll pull the filth out of my arm. There's like some thick sloughing sound. Like oh. <laughs> you've got to use diaper. Um, no, you're fine. Eh. It's like a really, <laughs> it's like a really wet gummy bear. So just to let All you right. know, this is why you don't wear boots down here. It just gets in there. It's just no good. That's fair. Yeah, your boots are. Are you barefooted? Cemented. Yeah. Why would High four? five. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> gross. Did we just become yeah. best friends? <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, all right. We oh specifically my God, negotiated you. a boot allowance for, <laughs> <laughs> for, yeah, for you. For you. I was being generous. For Thank you. We can get new boots. <laughs> I'm going to add that to the playtest notes for this adventure. Add boot allowance. <laughs> all right. Uh... <laughs> As the as the author of this adventure, it's always funny when the players come up with something that you're like, "Oh yeah, that would be a real big concern for the players." <laughs> <laughs> should, have, should have mentioned that. Wouldn't all right, so big concern. But. All right, so uh, you guys begin marching down this kind of uh, cavernous chamber. It looked like this used to be a little bit nicer and cleaner, but the fire looked like it ruined it and 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 kind of uh, torched this place and any th symbols or signs that were on the walls are, are long since gone. Go ahead and move yourself up until you're uh, at the at the entrance to the larger chamber uh, Speaking to the of west. Torches. Who here can't see in the dark? That is fair. It is perfectly dark in here. Who has light or mm. a torch? I will cast light on my staff. Okay. I will. I will also pull out a torch. Okay. It probably won't explode in here. You're probably okay. But I mean, if if we do explode, we don't have to worry about it anymore. So, I will put my torch. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> <laughs> I'll wait. We the got last some group light. of adventurers did explode. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait on the torch. All for right. Now. Uh, well, Thanks for that, Ben. Not quite. It'll allow you to see better in what dim light is provided by the by the the light spell. Um, uh, kind of out at the fringes, but it won't it won't okay. serve you completely. All right. Uh, the winding passageway uh, opens up into a uh, rather large chamber. 
The walls of this long chamber are scorched dark, and the thick layers of soot crusting the ceiling attest to the tremendous fire that must have raged through this room in the past. Burial niches in the walls and the rows of central pillars contain only fragments of burnt wood and charred bone. It doesn't even smell like fire anymore. This must have happened quite some time ago. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, it's gotten to that point where the walls are, are suit-covered black and humidity is now beaded on it, so it looks like weird and shiny, and if you touch it, your hands come away kind of filthy. Um, the, the whole room still kind of smells like sewer, and every once in a while as you walk through it and create kind of these smears and the soot and filth on the ground, uh, it kicks up kind of this odd smell of like burnt sewer. <laughs> yeah, just just when you thought it couldn't smell any worse. We needed it to smell worse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, where would you like to go? Where should we go, Finn? Would Finn know where to go from here? Yeah, you know that where the deeper parts of the dungeon are, uh, where the Ashen Ossuary are, you know that uh, most of the caverns off to the west are kind of all dead ends, uh, one of which contains the fungus. Um, that you should definitely avoid because yeah. that stuff makes people very sick. Yeah, um, it's not good stuff. So you know that most of those are dead ends. Um, you know, I have the map out on the table here because Fen has a rough idea where everything is and kind of can draw you crude maps in the soot if needed. Um, so don't consider anything you see here to be really much of a spoiler um, uh, for your own experience. So, uh, but yeah, you know that you need to kind of head north. This chamber is used by the members of your tribe, mm -hmm. uh, primarily as kind of the living room, although there are so few of you nowadays, who knows how many could even be in here. It's Might be none. We're just full of delicious blood, I mean. Huh? Yeah. So I'll uh, go ahead and step out really quickly here, sniff around at the air real quick, and then start leading them this direction. Because that's the way we need to go to get to the well room where I threw that dead rat I did If eat. I can, I want to kind of brush past her and go around the corner behind the tiefling. Okay. Around okay. There. I'm going to make sure like my so? crossbow's reloaded. No, behind him. You're going to make sure your crossbow's reloaded? Yep. All right. All right. And I'd actually, I'd like to do that kind of sur surreptitiously, so I kind of just sneak along the wall behind him. All right. So uh, you're able to make your, your way into this room. You're, you're along, there are these niches, and there's about two or three of them stacked high in set into the wall, um, uh, like kind of all throughout this chamber. Um, they, each one contains burnt piles of ash and looks like fragment of bone, and occasionally you'll see like some twisted hunk of metal that must have been like a piece of brass jewelry or something like that that is now completely ruined and worthless. Um, there's bits of wood, there's there's something that looks like it might have one point in time been a dagger, but the tip is entirely melted and the handle is gone, right? There's just junk kind of everywhere. All of the niches in here look like they've pretty much been ruined, at least the ones on this side of the room. Um, the floor is covered in footprints, by the way. They're all over the place. Um, it, you can't really make them out. There. A lot of them look like goblin footprints, but every once in a while you spot a, a thing that clearly looks like a boot. Um, hmm. And not a goblin footprint. The Taker. Um, he does wear boots, it's true. They're vampire boots. At least that's what Talga says. He probably um, took them from he somebody. He took them, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> right, yeah. He did the, there's a decent <laughs> chance. The Taker t took... All right, forget it. All right. Um, so uh, go ahead and move yourselves uh, forward another 15 feet or so. Um, you're making your way up to... Uh, and Fen, you know that this is here. There's kind of this large uh, archway that leads deeper in... It's covered with weird, strange words that you don't like to look at, um, mainly because you're a goblin and they don't like writing. Um, they it, haven't hurt anybody true. or anything, but they look like some weird sort of inscription or something. Um, uh, and that those are over the archway that leads deeper into the into the dungeon. I do kind of want to poke. I mean, as I passed a couple of these niches that are two or three high, just kind of poke in them and see if there's anything of interest or value in them. Yeah, you kind of are doing that, but it looks like these have all been gone through. Like, it looks like you're not the first person to who's, poke who's these. Okay. And um, uh, the only ones that look kind of undisturbed are the ones <laughs> at the very <laughs> top. Uh, I was just about to point that out, yeah. <laughs> the rest yeah. Really <laughs> but even those look mostly empty. They're just filled with, like, fragments of bone and ash. And it's clear that some of them, someone has climbed up, like, standing in the second one to pilfer the third to one. rummage yeah. around. You see, like, off. footprints in the second niche, in the first niche, as they climb up the wall. 
Um, so yeah, um, you guys make it up to that point, and um, quite suddenly, uh, out of the darkness up ahead, just on the edge of your light, um, as you make your way deeper into the dungeon, uh, you see at first just kind of a, a weird like shadow move through the edge of your light, and then quite suddenly, coming in from kind of all sides on that side of the room, are a bunch of goblins. These goblins have wide eyes that are covered in kind of a milky residue, and they're just and they scream bloody murder as they come charging out of the dark. Nope, they're on drugs. Just yeah, <laughs> they're all goblins. All right, how so far, I've got four goblins. Like? If you can arrange them around, uh, yeah, around there and over on the other side as well, um, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, put all four of them kind of out in that area there. Like perfect. So. Yeah, that's absolutely perfect. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So four goblins come charging out of the dark. Um, uh, they all have weapons drawn as if they heard you coming and have prepared for battle. Um, so why don't we go ahead and roll initiative? I think this time everybody's rolling perception as you guys were just kind of making your way in. Make sure I've got the right stats up here. I don't want to fight them. They're my... They're kind of my friends. Actually, they're kind of jerks, but still. Uh, these guys are jerks. Like, one of the guys over on the left there, like, stole your sandwich last week. He's a real... Yeah. That was the one that wasn't... Uh, yeah, like, you found that one just after somebody threw it down a sewer hole, yeah. and, then, like, it just had, like, two bites out of it. I mean, it tastes kind of bad, but it, it, it tastes a hell of a lot better than the thing you found floating the other day. Mm. All right. <laughs> so, um... Float sandwiches are never that no. good. Nobody wants a float no. sandwich. But it's a sub. <laughs> <Yeah>. Katina. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. I don't. <laughs> this, this, this is the cursed are couch. Are you really? Dan, yeah, make note. The couch on that side is the cursed couch. That's where <laughs> puns come from. All right. Um, so can I get everybody to roll their perception checks? Uh, hold on to the numbers. I'm going to go ahead and roll mine. Should okay. we not kill these guys? I. Uh, you can kill that one over there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the one with the sandwich. We're yeah. capable of knocking them out, right? Uh, so. You can, but uh, they look bloodthirsty. Like they have weapons drawn and are like licking the blades as they come <laughs> forward. Oh, and are, no, and Steve, don't do that. You poison that the other way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Steve <laughs> makes bad decisions. Uh, Evelyn, Aaron, what do you got? Uh, I have a twelve. Twelve. Uh, Fen, what do you got? A three. A three. I there's there's a typical paladin initiative. <laughs> uh, well, Tiefling. I do better than that. I get eight. Oh, eight. Nice. Raising the Luca. Roof. 20. Okay, Whoa. good, good. Somebody's going before the goblins. <laughs> that's good. That's that's a good thing. All right. So, uh, Luca, you get to act first. Uh, these goblins come charging out of the darkness. They have weapons drawn. They look bloodthirsty. They have... Uh, they're all, like, shouting and screaming and twisted goblin tongue. Uh, and you can you can understand them perfectly. They're screaming like, "Kill them all! Kill them for Drakus!" Um, and they just have like milky rim, and you can see like they have this like bluish purple stain all around their lips from mm. the fungus that oh they've been no. eating. Yeah. These guys are on they are they are on drugs. So I just kind of say no to drugs. Lean like I no. lean around the corner, and with my staff, I tap it on the ground and that shakes the mistletoe that's festooned to it mm -hmm. and there's an arc of lightning that goes to this guy and then jumps to this guy oh wow oh, all right so you unleash a electric arc, arc. yeah all right uh, that is a new druid cantrip correct yes it's a yes it is awesome okay nice. so uh you unleash a arc of electricity between the two of them and, and each target must attempt a reflex save it targets one or two creatures okay each target must all right, I'm going to go ahead and attempt their reflex saves. What's my DC? Your DC is 15. 15. The first one is going to fail, but not critically. And the second one is going to make. Uh, the first one takes one damage. Uh, one damage? <laughs> and the other one electric. Okay. And the other one takes two. Two. All two. right. So you, uh, <laughs> you unleash a... Uh, 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 shock uh, between the two of them, and uh, they uh, kind of both jar a bit, and now they look at you with real bloodlust. <laughs> um, okay. Good job. Now they're mad. <laughs> Luckily, I'm behind a bunch of people. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Get them to come fight me. It'll be great. <coughs> All right. So uh, let's go ahead and have the goblins act. Um, so I'm going to start with the one closest to me. 
he is going to move forward up to Fen. And he starts screaming, Traitor! You betrayed Dracus! And he's going to swing his dog slicer at you. He's technically correct. I mean, that's... <laughs> he's I never correct. worked for the guy. <laughs> they're, they're jacked up on drugs. I, I've never been... No. <laughs> Armor class 25. Uh, well, that won't Ooh. crit me, but that'll still hit. All right. Uh, so he slams the dog slicer into you with fury, uh, dealing four points of damage. He is then going to take his third action to swing at you again. Rude. Um, he is going to uh, get a, let's see, it's agile. So that means instead of taking a minus five, he's only going to take a minus four. So Oof. he's going to get a 13, which nope. I don't think is enough to hit you. Okay. Um, so uh, I'm now going to have that goblin move. He is going to move up to that corner space near Fen. And when he moves there, the goblin that's directly in front of Fen spends his reaction to scuttle. And he is going to take a five foot step back. There we go. Thank you. Uh, the goblin that hit you, um, or sorry, the goblin that just moved up, he mm -hmm. spent one action to move up. He's then going to swing at you uh, with his dog slicer. Um, and he's going to get a 24. Okay. Well, that'll hit me, but not crit. Yeah. Uh, Takes six points of damage. Ow, ow, gosh, These goblins okay. seem <coughs> furious at you. They uh, seem really angry. Yeah, they're they're on drugs, man. The bad kind. He's going to swing again, but this time he's only going to get eleven. So I'm wagering that's going to miss. Correct. All right. Now I'm going to go to the goblin uh, toward the front on the other side there, and he's going to move around the rock, uh, the around the niche, three, four, five to there. Yeah, and he's going to swing at. Let's see, who can I see? You, I can still, wait, are you adjacent to me? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. yep, both of us are. Both yeah. Of us. Uh, all right, he's going to swing at you, uh, um, uh, Luca, because you uh, cast a spell, and he is afraid of magic. So he's going to swing his dog slicer at you, and he's only going to get an 11. I'm gonna wait That's a miss. Gonna but he is gonna swing a second time, and he's going to get a 12. I'm wondering that's also going to miss. Mm -hmm. All right, so he swings twice impotently. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't uh, the dice don't like you. Yeah, clearly. Um, the right. goblin on goblin My range. My last is goblin good. is going to move up into the space that was vacated by the goblin that scuttled backward. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to swing it. All right, go. Come uh, what he does, does it mean this one scuttles somewhere That one else? can scuttle. He'll five-foot scuttle away. Yeah. Great. Okay. Crit. Yep. Well, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, he uh, rolls a natural twenty. Uh, so he is going to get a critical hit. Uh, that is going to do two d six damage. No. Five. Five is ten. Ooh. All right. Yeah. No. Uh, Fen will definitely KO here. All right. Oh, so no. uh, Fen has been dropped to zero hit points. Oh uh, my blood! He, uh, oh god! What a big <laughs> ass! Uh, so uh, that was a critical hit. So that's going to drop you to dying two. two. Yep. Um, so you have dying two right at the moment, and I'm going to note uh, the DC at which uh, you are, which is right there. Well, that escalated. <laughs> All right. Yeah. They, that, well, that got serious quickly yeah, as opposed yeah. to the, uh, Don't the, worry, guys. the, the oozes. Um, okay. Uh, the ooze. All right. So uh, that was all the goblins. Um, Great. Yeah. Uh, he runs up and hits you uh, once. And then with his final action, uh, yeah, he's actually going to move around to uh, help his ally. He's not going to step on Fen. He's going to go around one, two, three, five. That's as far as he can move. Um, so he's going to move to that location and go around to start attacking the others. Okay, so uh, that's the goblins. The goblins have now all acted. Uh, Evelyrin, your ally has collapsed. Oh no, I don't have anything that can help. <laughs> I like your conviction. You're like, oh no. Uh, I do. I can. I can step help. Step over. <laughs> so Fen, just so you know, well. your initiative moved to directly before the goblins, so yeah. you won't be going for a bit yet. But okay. you are at dying two. Which yeah, is, which I'm, is I'm okay with that. That gives everybody else news. more time to stop that condition. From that, is, that is fair. From worsening. Uh, all right, Evelyn. Um So I have a question, actually, about my stance. Yeah. Uh, it says it keeps going until it's... It does, but when you drop out of combat, it ends. Okay, so yeah, you'll I need to you'll sure need to kick it back <laughs> up again. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, then I'd like to <laughs> step over, yeah, Fen. Sure. 
Probably um, you can move up to that goblin up, uh, yeah. up ahead of you there. I don't yeah, think yeah, they can yep. do anything. Sorry, Ben. Yep. <laughs> We'll save you, buddy. <laughs> oh, no. Um, and then, I have friends. Let's see. Yeah, I think I'm just going to do my tiger stance again and claw at him. Okay. That's, that's my signature right. move. <laughs> All right, so you drop into tiger stance uh, again, uh, grow the claws, and uh, slam into this goblin. Go ahead. All right. Ooh, that's funny. Oh, nice. That is a critical hit. Um, okay. So go ahead and roll double damage uh, okay. as your claw latches into this goblin's neck and you just pull. Also, when I crit, uh, when I succeed on a crit, I do 1d4 bleed damage. All right. <laughs> That's probably <laughs> really bad for him. <laughs> It'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so that's 8 for the damage. Can you hand me that goblin, please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bleed so, doesn't much matter. So, uh, <laughs> here, here's what happens. You, your claws latch into this goblin's, like, windpipe yeah. and just rip the whole thing out. Like, <laughs> the goblin just starts, like, choking on all of the blood that's now pouring out of his neck. The ally next to him just gets spattered with the blood from his friend Whoa. and just sits there staring. <laughs> 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 And is screaming now. That goblin is very, very dead. Now Those that was one of the fed. goblins you had hurt with the electric arc before, but I'm, um, I'm the crit totally murdered him. Yeah, I'm thinking maybe Fen is happy he didn't see that too. That's <laughs> yeah, no, that, sorry, buddy. That, that guy's <laughs> That's fine. That guy's really dead. I'm just taking a nap. Yeah, yeah. That guy helped you clean out your ear once. Yeah, when you had that centipede stuck in there. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah. All right. I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, no, <laughs> I know, but you know, now he's now he's drinking. He's eating the mushrooms. Yeah, so he's not. He's not in his right. He only helped because he wanted to eat the centipede. T flame. I mean. Alrighty. Well, this is the one that critted my friend. I'm, I'm inclined to offer him the open position of goblin within our party. He seems to be effective. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he, he does seem like he knows but what he's doing. He's got doing. the glazed drug. Yeah, no, it does, you don't Maybe think instead I will shoot him with a crossbow. All uh, right. Next to this guy, but unless he's got some special reaction. Well, you're going to take the, the risk that he can't take an attack opportunity. I am taking that risk. All right. You risk. Oh! And is that a 20 again? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I returned okay. his crit with a crit of my own. Okay, so the past three attack rolls at this table have now been 20s, so that's I'm not bad. so oh. glad it wasn't me. So 13 <laughs> points of damage is probably going to be. <laughs> so, Fen doesn't see this either, that's but okay. that crossbow bolt sinks right through this goblin's <laughs> forehead and comes out the back. The goblin behind him gets poked in the forehead <laughs> by the crossbow bolt, and is just like, ah! <laughs> um, he is also... Super dead. Like if the friend behind him is spattered with goblin <laughs> blood and brain, uh, that would be. Let's see. That was number two. Oh, that was over there. Oh, that was number. Um, that was number. And yeah, since the oh, goblin that I'm standing next to oh, didn't okay. do anything when I made the attack, I'll no, uh, he did not. Keep up the. I'll ray of frost. Uh, ray of frost the one next to me there. All right. Can we keep the? Can we keep the streak alive? Uh, oh, no, only so half of that. Um, what about a 14? A 14 is just barely enough to hit, so go ahead and roll damage. It's only two points of damage. Two points of damage. That goblin is still up. Yeah, the ray of frost hits him in the shoulder. It turns all blue and icy, but and he looks like he's hurt by it, but he's still up and fighting. Oh, you gave him the cold shoulder. <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> it's like, oh, it's like, you set that up. It's not even on me. <laughs> you walk right into that. Yeah, that's fair. That's all on me. And that's uh, my three actions. All right. So, uh, Luca. It is your action. So I turn around with my halfling staff and I brain this guy. It's right next to me. Mm. Very good. All right. You use your halfling staff mm -hmm. and uh, slam it into this guy. Uh, that's only 20. Uh, that will hit. For it's two damage. It's not a critical hit, but it is a hit. All right. Two 20. damage. Um, he, uh, that, like, slams into his other shoulder that looks like it's now dislocated, <laughs> but he's still up and fighting. I'm going to take an action to step here. Yep. And then uh, just a somatic action to touch him and heal him. All right. So, uh, you have been healed. Go ahead and roll the healing. Okay. <coughs> or would you rather roll it? Me? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like you've six. all been rolling so way better. <laughs> you are brought up to six hit points. Um, you are no longer in danger of dying, but you need to make a check 
to regain consciousness. All and right. we'll get to that when it's your turn here in just a moment. Okay. I do want to note for those watching at home, make sure to tune in on Monday where we'll be releasing a new document with entirely new death and dying rules. We're changing some elements of them. You'll get a chance to see what those are on Monday. I was going to play test them here today, but I think it might be just confusing enough that folks watching might not get it. So we're going to play by the, the rules in the playtest rulebook today. But as of Monday, tune in for new death and dying rules. So make sure to come back for that. All right. You still get to suffer under the current death and dying rules. So All uh, right. it is now your turn. Uh, Luca has taken all three of his actions. So you may now make a check to regain consciousness. This is a fortitude saving throw. Uh, that's going to be a seven then. A seven, yeah, no, you're you're still unconscious. Um, you are no longer in danger of dying. You don't lose any, you, you, you don't, the dying condition doesn't increase or anything because mm -hmm. you've been healed. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do not regain consciousness. So we're gonna continue moving so on. So this little cover is here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, to be honest, it's almost kind of for the best if you guys just kill all the goblins while he's still out, and then it, and then are like, yeah, I don't know, they just killed themselves. It's fine. I don't know what happened. It was crazy. There's yeah. just so many drugs. They just they just suddenly stabbed each other with our weapons. Um, <laughs> oh yeah, that's classic. That happens all the time. <laughs> classic. All right, so the goblins go. I'm going to start with the one that's right next to the tiefling, all right. and he is going to go ahead and just. Swing away at you with that dog slicer of his. That is entirely expected. Yeah. So the first one's going to be a 23. 23 will hit, but not crit. Uh, <laughs> so close. Six points of damage, though. Alrighty. Ouch. He's going to swing again. Oh boy. Now, this one's only a 12. 12 does not hit me. And he's going to swing at you a third time, even though he doesn't really have much of a chance to hit. He's going to try anyway. Uh, no, that's only going to be a 12 again, actually. Right. So that's definitely going to miss. Also misses. All right. So, uh, he swings at you three times, but does not manage to connect. The uh, goblin that's out there uh, with uh, Evaliran is going to step forward and then swing twice. So, let's take that first swing. Here it is. Uh, armor class 14. Nope. Nope. All right, and it's going to swing again. Uh, armor class 6. No, not going to be enough. So, the goblin swings wildly, and uh, my hot dice streak has apparently come to an end. <laughs> um so, uh, two wild swings, uh, kind of a blood frenzy. You're pretty sure some of the gore that's all over that guy may have occluded his vision in yeah. some way. So, uh, that helps. Evaliran, it is now your turn. Um, well, I mean, he's right in front of me, so I kind of got to slash him. <laughs> yeah, if you have to. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Oh, darn. <laughs> Quick before oh, Finn wakes up. <laughs> all all my friends are dead. They've slashed gonna, faces. You gonna flurry me? I think I should actually. All right. So flurry of blows is one action that allows the monk to take two strikes for one action. Mm -hmm. Those are gonna count towards your multiple attack penalty, but you still get to take, if you want, four attacks in one round, which is pretty good. It's, pretty uh, it's kind of the, the the key cool things that monks can do mm -hmm. at first level. Um, so go ahead and All roll right. some attacks. Okay, so number one. Oh boy, that's a 19. Remember that time you didn't need more than one attack? That that 19 <laughs> plus your bonus? <laughs> yeah, so it's going to be 24. That's a critical hit. <laughs> that's a nice trachea. Yeah, yeah no, that's. What are you, collecting <laughs> trachea? Is that what's going on? You're going to have a, I'm having a necklace of goblin throats? Yeah, no. no that's no, fair. Have I not fair. shown you my necklace of yeah, goblin throats? That's a thing that everyone has, right? Yeah, it's totally she uses great. She yeah, uses it's it to make aesthetic. macaroni art. Can I flurry with my tiger claw? Is that what I use? Yeah, okay, absolutely. Yeah. So then it's going to be a D8, which is right here. Just imagining your character as like the predator now, just like, oh, just like ripping Everything things through. Yep. Let's see if I need the bleed damage this time. That's 10 points. <laughs> no, you do not need the bleed damage. I will take that goblin mini. That, Man, is that was now a flurry. A, uh, a, a no yet another pile of gore. All right, so uh, that was one action. Um, you do technically lose that other attack because you can't take it on anybody. Right, yeah. uh, but you do still have both of your other actions. So if you wanted to, you could move and still take your... Well, in this case, it would only be your second attack. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can... Can I, like, step over to this little corner? Mm -hmm. Right there? Yeah. All right, the half-elf tiger comes whirling around ah. there. <laughs> All right, uh, oh, okay. and that was your second action, so you still do have your third, but so it is only going to be your second attack because you didn't actually take the second one earlier. So okay, um, so I can't 
start a new flurry? No, you can only flurry as you're open. It has to be the first thing you do. Oh, so, okay. uh, yeah. That's so, okay. I can yep. just slash him. That's yeah. fine. So far, I'm only if you insist, so he's far, already. I'm only he's already, already. I can only keep the Goblin Murder train going. Yeah. I guess. yeah. <laughs> this one's at minus five, correct? Yeah. Oh no, that is a three. <laughs> a three uh, plus. Plus zero. Plus zero. Yeah. Plus five minus five. All right, yeah, yeah. So, all right. So you come swing wildly at that goblin, and you know what? The tracheas <laughs> that are embedded in your claws are just—they're just—it's making it really oh. hard for you to hit. All right. Uh, tiefling. Alrighty. I'm going to take two actions to sort of unhinge my jaw a little bit. I utilize I my yeah. demonic power. Oh, oh, great. For, uh, um... <laughs> for it's my really good you're still unconscious. <laughs> Glutton's Jaws. I'm just, I'm just that gonna. takes two actions to activate Glutton's Jaws. And with my third, I'm, I'm gonna bite him. That seems unfortunate for him. Okay, so those of you who are conscious see your your sorcerer friend's mouth distend into this unholy maw filled with suddenly razor sharp teeth. I'm um, okay. Yeah, no, You're no good. one's okay You're with it. <laughs> Before I do, I do want to turn to my two conscious companions. And go. Shh. <laughs> we just met you. The, the goblin's like. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> nah. no, no! That's I only a thirteen to hit you, though. A thirteen is just barely gonna miss. Like you, oh. you come within inches. He's waving fingers at <laughs> you, and he just <laughs> manages <laughs> to fend you off. And just like, no, no, <laughs> oh god, <laughs> not like this, this oh god! god. Hmm. <laughs> All right, okay. Luca. I load. I shoot. All right, you load up your staff and l let it fly. <clears throat> Oh, I miss. It's a five. A five. Yeah, the stone goes winging overhead. All right. And I'm going to use my last action to load again. All right. So you're all loaded up and ready to go. Fen, you are still unconscious. Give me another fortitude saving throw. Oh, 15. That is going to be enough. So you regain consciousness. Um, I do believe you get a good portion of your action left. Oh. Let me double check because... Um, You'll have to excuse me. I we just recently changed these rules, and I forgot how the previous <laughs> ones still work. <laughs> All right, so recovery saving throw. There we are. Success. Uh, you lose one action, so you get two actions this turn. Okay. You do still have the dying two condition, and it'll bleed off over the next two turns. Okay, and then be gone. Uh, so you get to act this round, and you have two actions. What would you All like right. to do? Uh, standing up is a move action, I presume. Correct. All right, then Fen will kind of stand up. Like, oh God! Action. It's not even a move action. It's what? just an action. What, yep. what happened? Thing. Yeah, that's right. Where did everybody's tracheas go? <laughs> oh, God, yeah. Where? <laughs> <laughs> You're looking at an absolute bloodbath. <laughs> there, are, there are two goblins that have been eviscerated in front of you. And, and Their heads are dangling <laughs> by a thread. What happened? <laughs> what happened to his face? <laughs> <laughs> it was the freeze. Uh, so 550 <coughs> is already here. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. He's he's looking at you going, I don't know where I'm Get out of here, man. Just run. He's, he's, your friends. You. he's like, that guy's a freak. <laughs> <laughs> With your big terrifying jaw. He no, swings. He's it. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, really it. Yeah. Um, he's going to swing his uh, his dog slicer at you, Tiefling. Uh uh, 12 is going to miss. He's going to keep swinging, though. He wants you dead. Uh, armor class 21, actually. It does hit. Uh, for just one point of damage. His heart isn't <laughs> in it anymore. He's too, he's too terrified he's not going to get his hand oh, back. Tell him where his heart's going to be. <laughs> yeah, and then he swings at you a third time, but that's uh, that's going to be about 14, which I'm wagering is going to miss you. No, 14 is my armor class. Oh, really? Ooh. Oh, he hit you with the third one, then, just right. barely. Oh. Uh, for another five points of damage. Ouch. I collapse. Oh from my! Back. Oh no! Oh, he, he managed to, do, he's, and he he knocks you to the ground, and he starts hopping <laughs> up and down like I <laughs> killed the freak, and he's screaming that <laughs> goblin. Um, I, I don't know how I feel about me. this. <laughs> <laughs> I just I kind of look over, and there's like Pennywise with just like <laughs> giant uh, spoilers. Uh, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> wait, you mean a clown is evil? That seems unusual. Well, I mean, we're right. float down here, man. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, you are in a sewer. Yeah. Uh, all right. Before we get sued, uh, <laughs> Emily Lyran, it is your turn. <laughs> I'm gonna point my claw at the one that just knocked down the tiefling. All right. Just menacingly. He just wets himself a little bit. <laughs> oh wait, okay. he hit my friend. Reaction goes off. Oh boy. Yeah, oh. no, he did, didn't he? Yeah. yeah. All yeah. right. Wait, wait. Yeah. 
You might not be a <laughs> twenty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Give me your trachea. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he's like I'm gonna. I'm like oh no. <laughs> and uh, so that's gonna be eleven points of damage. <laughs> All right. So so that yeah. five points of damage didn't land. So uh, the uh, goblin did defeat the monster. The goblin tried to uh, swing at you, and uh, the paladin was like nah, nah, and slammed your flail. Yeah, it's a flail. Right back into its face. You hear a bunch of wet crunching noises. And the goblin collapses into the ground. Uh, so I'll take that last one off the map for you there. I'll stand Wait. back up. All right. Okay. You just hear me say, so much murder. Yeah, that, <laughs> that was uncomfortable. What happened to the other ones? Like, like this one was born for his trauma, but like this neck is missing. Like the trachea, the hard part's just gone. Meanwhile, your monk oh. is like shaking the gore <laughs> off of her fingers. Oh, oh like bits of <laughs> yeah. viscera. Out. Oh, I thought those were iron knuckles in your hands, not tracheas. <laughs> oh, iron tracheas. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, all right. I, I've learned something today. Okay, <laughs> so um, you guys uh, gather up, you know, yourselves. You're obviously taking stock of your situations. You're pretty wounded, so I don't know if anybody wants to do any healing or anything like that. Now's a is, good time. Is for that. Everybody at least a little wounded? I'm yeah. not at all wounded. You're clear. I'm not wounded. I am. I am I am as well. Do you want some healing? Um heal party. I'd like to ask something. Yeah. Is it possible that I could have a, at least acquired one good berry today? Oh, with uh with uh yeah, I'll say that, you know. I mean you're you're a druid. You could have stopped by one of Magnamar's many parks and, and picked up some berries before to cast the spell on. Okay. So I'll make sure you wash how that. many can I have? <laughs> I have four spell points. I could have you know. Oh, you have four. That's fine. Yeah. I say, I have food that will heal you. Did yeah, it yeah, that, that sounds a awesome. A lot or a little, it's a... Mm. Uh, kind of hurt a lot. They're delicious. <laughs> they're, the, the, those even berries, in the that's sewer? Not a, that's not <laughs> I didn't get hit by sewer water. I, I, I found these Wait sewer minute, berries. <laughs> <laughs> those aren't sewer berries. <laughs> that makes them like the only clean food around. Yeah. Okay, yeah. how much? <laughs> Free. It's uh, very kind of you. You druids. I'll, so have, nice. I'll have one. Uh, I'd also it's like one. Big juicy blackberry. Oh, I guess thing is that. Oh, it's. Wow. Okay. <laughs> All right. And when you eat it, you're full. Nice. Yeah. It's like a full meal. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How much does it heal them? 1d4 plus 4. Oh. You guys can roll it for yourselves. Yeah, good berry's a little bit better than it used wow. to be. Yeah. yeah. So we oh, made nice. that a, a one of I'd the druids' so signature cantrips. A lot better. Yeah. That puts me at 13. Mm. You still hurt? A little bit. I will spend one of my heal spells and give us both four points of healing. That's exactly what I needed. All right. Sweet. Cool. So, uh, a uh, burst of energy uh, pops out of you because you, you cast heal using all three actions, right? right? Because heal can be now be cast three ways, right? Mm -hmm. you have one action, you can do it at a touch. Two actions, you can do it at range. And three, you can hit everyone within uh, a burst, but it does less. It doesn't do a D8 plus four, it just does four. Uh, higher level versions, you start getting some of those dice back in, but the, the burst always does a little less. Mm -hmm. So, okay, so you've managed to uh, defeat the goblins that were in here, and Oof. yeah, you're pretty sure you're not taking any of them prisoner. Yeah, These guys are super dead. I was hoping <laughs> one of them might get back up after that, but uh, no. No, mm -mm. Oh, yeah. no, sorry. None of them are getting back up after that. Um, so uh, you're able to search them, and I mean they've got some ruined, uh, kind of spoiled gear, right? Some, uh, some you know, kind of broken uh, weapons and armor and stuff. Nothing really of value. Um, but you're able to kind of search around the room, and and a little bit further back, you find the area where they were camping, and it looks like they were in the mil middle of building some statue. We call it an effigy, but yeah, you you can call <coughs> it. That's nice. <laughs> yeah, it looks like a statue made out of like mud and filth and garbage. It's not mud. <laughs> <laughs> he said and filth. Yeah, <laughs> and filth. Um, so it looks like it's vaguely like you see like two legs with like kind of boot, like kind of sculpture. It, it looks like they were trying to build a, a statue of Dracus. Um, you would guess because mm -hmm. he's the only 
person you know who wears boots, but it, it, it's gross and it looks like it's hey, falling you know over. Us? It's now? all like yeah. the torso is all like leaning far too far to one side. One of the arms is falling off and the head's missing, and it's hey. just kind of a mess. Um, but you do get back here, and the niches back here look like they haven't been plundered or slept in. They look like you can see like part of a rib cage in one of them. Where's the other ones? Those raw. Take a look around in them. All right. Well, why don't everybody give me a uh, perception check if you guys want to search around the area? Yeah. You don't. You, you're <laughs> uninterested. All right, no, I, I'm like a little bit terrified of them doing it. <laughs> so much death. <laughs> what are you doing to that? My search is cursory at best. You, you get an eight, and you're like, I found a pinky, everybody, and you're kind of showing it off to people, and that's I it. Found a wow. <laughs> yeah. Um, seventeen. Seventeen. That's pretty good. Uh, eight. Eight. All right. Yeah, you found the same pinky that he found. You're like, wow, that's really cool. Wow. Yeah. Um, no, but with the, good the job. seventeen in, in, in I'm, I'm not gonna eat that. No. <laughs> in one of the niches, you see um, what looks to be like a, a moldered uh, leather pouch that looks like it got burned pretty bad, but is is kind of intact. And when you pick it up, it kind of falls apart. But you do see what's inside of it. And what's inside of it is a small steel vial. Um, looks like uh, uh, it's about this big. It's got a, a steel cap that's kind of screwed into it. It looks like a a, a a vial, and you pick it up, and it sounds like there's liquid inside. Hmm. You can feel kind of a sloshy uh, motion when you when you turn it around in your hands. Does anybody know things about chemicals or? <coughs> I will give the ping of detect magic to see if it. It uh, you suddenly detect magic in the area outside Bing. of uh, one of the great parts about detect magic is you can kind of ignore your friends and all of the <coughs> things they have on them now. So in this case, you suddenly detect magic in the area, and it, it clearly must be coming from this vial. Um, so yeah, it's clearly magical. Um, you can work to identify it, but it does take a little bit of time now. Um, if is the party it? like breaks to stop and like have lunch and rest a little bit. Um, you'd have enough time. It takes like an hour now. Uh, there's a skill feat later that greatly reduces that time, but I don't think you you probably don't have it. Just well, yet. if we get an, if we get an hour, I can take a closer look. But we'll figure out what it does. We found a magic thing. Yeah. All right. Do you want to hang on to it? Should I keep it? Does it have any symbols on the vial? Uh, I don't believe so. Um. Uh, no, it doesn't. It uh, it it uh, it's just a small uh, metal vial. I should also note. That uh, the, there was a skeletal hand grasping that pouch, and it was really tarnished at first. But when you moved his side, you realized that some of the soot and whatnot fell off, and it's a silver ring. Mm. Um, so you found a, a silver ring uh, el along with that uh, that metal vial. So okay. um, the silver ring is probably worth a fair amount of money. It looks a very high craftsmanship, so it looks like it's very well made. And but I can take the vial and walk. Walk it away. Yeah, it down, you can you can figure out it's ping it's, again it's clearly the, the vial. It's clearly the okay. vial. That's but it's not and not the ring. Not the ring. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. So you've got that. Um, what do you do next? I'm gonna ask everybody. So you said that there's like arcane ruins kind of around the entrance of this uh, hall that leads forward. They're not arcane. They're oh, clearly okay. th nothing has ever happened when the goblins go in and out. So okay. they're clearly n there's clearly no bad magic there. See if anybody knows what those actually say. The the, the Dracus, the goblins were at first very hesitant to go down that tunnel just yeah. because words are yeah. bad. Yeah, um, totally. But Dracus just looked like laughed at everyone and cajoled them and 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 walked down the tunnel anyway. And nothing um, happened. And nothing happened. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. That that's how you knew he was clearly very powerful. Exactly. And probably a vampire. It's probably Vampires true. are powerful. Did everyone he, knows that. Did somebody invite him into <laughs> the tunnel? He, he didn't even need to be. He was just that <laughs> strong. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's, he's that great a vampire. I tried dropping um, some coins next to him once. He never counted them. I was just like, Whoa. <laughs> wow. That's 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 a that's a that's one of the vampire uh, myths that a lot of people don't know is that they have to count. Oh yeah, I, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, like I, I tried drinking yeah. some water once. Yeah. All right. So. Um, uh, looking at this tunnel, there is kind of an inscription, a litany on it. And uh, do any of you have, are any of you trained in religion? I am. Yeah. You don't even need to make a check. This is obvious. Um, this is a litany to Phrasma. Oh, okay. The goddess of death um, and the afterlife. Um, this That's not unusual to see that um, in a place where bodies are buried. Right, it's like you know, yeah. Where you inter bodies, you include inscriptions, uh, uh, 
blessing for Rasma because you know you want the bodies to go on, the souls to go on to a good afterlife, and Phrasma is the ultimate judge of that. So, this might be a sanctum to Phrasma. As a matter of fact, most places where bodies buried are. So, that's not really that surprising. But that would make the vampire being here particularly repulsive to the religion. Because that Phrasma is true. Undead. Oh yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Phrasma despises undead. They are they are the opposite of the natural order for her. So, yeah, but. Uh, apparently this Dracus is a very powerful vampire. <laughs> You'll forgive me if I just suspect that everybody is wrong about that. What? You and your foolish, non-believing ways. All right, so... I have lots of wisdom. All right, so what do you guys do? <laughs> I head down the passageway, I think. Yeah. Keep walking. All right. So you guys begin making your way down the passageway, and at this point in time, I think what we're probably going to do is take a short little break. Uh, we're going to allow everybody here at the table uh, a chance to uh, go use the restroom, get some more water, and get everything set up for the next encounter. We'll be back in just a few minutes, everybody, to continue playing part one of Doomsday Dawn, The Lost Star. See you in a few.